Hello friends and welcome to Study IQ. I am Joy C. Joy and today in this lecture we will discuss about the Climate Action Summit of 2019, the Mitigation and Adaptation Measures. So let us first come to the current affair. Let us see what is the current affair. The Climate Action Summit had taken place recently and uh, based on the Climate Action Summit, we will discuss about the benefits of adaptation and mitigation. We will also discuss what was the focus of this Climate Summit. We will see whether mitigation and adaptation were given equal preference or equal focus or whether the emphasis was given for mitigation. So all this is sorry so all these things we will discuss in detail so we will look into what is the climate action summit we will discuss about the concerns in the latest uh, climate action summit and also we will see what what is green climate fund and how does the green climate fund work or how it has worked all these years and we will see what are the shortfalls we will also discuss about the possible solutions we will discuss about the example of the sundarbans and we will see what is the way ahead or what has to be done. So these are the topics that we will discuss today in this lecture. So let us see what is the Climate Action Summit. So the Climate Action Summit of 2019 was hosted by UN Secretary General. So 2019 Climate Action Summit was uh, hosted by the UN Secretary General and the name of UN Secretary General is very very important for your competitive examination. So examination perspective this is very important. So the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres hosted the 2019 Climate Action Summit. Now the summit or the aim of the summit, the summit was held in order to boost ambition and to accelerate actions in order to implement the 2015 Paris Agreement on Climate Change. So the summit actually aimed at implementing those actions which were decided in the 2015 Paris Agreement on the Climate Change. Now the 2019 Climate Action Summit was also very important and uh, very significant from the perspective of the speech given by Greta Thunberg. So the speech also became very viral and she became very popular. So this is also to be remembered along with the Climate Action Summit of 2019. So this is in brief about the Climate Action Summit. Now let us come to what is the concern in the 2019 Climate Action Summit. So the basic concern is that there are both adaptation as well as mitigation. Now, mitigation is an old age assumption. Like giving more focus on mitigation, this is an old age assumption. So, the biggest concern that is found out in the Climate Action Summit and the outcome or the result of the Climate Action Summit is that they had given focus or more emphasis on mitigation which is an old age concept or old age assumption. So the old age assumption is that adaptation has certain limits therefore more emphasis should be given to mitigation. So this is the old age assumption and it is found that uh, this assumption has been upheld by the climate action summit. Now what is the problem with adaptation and mitigation? Now we have seen that the old age concept is to give more emphasis to mitigation but what is the biggest issue? The biggest issue is that larger parts of the world which comprises of underdeveloped countries and least developed countries. So they constitute larger parts of the world. So most of the underdeveloped countries and almost all the least developed countries does not have the means, the resources, the monetary resources in order to adopt mitigation. So this is the biggest limitation with the mitigation. Here the concern is that the UN, the United Nations has not acknowledged the fact that most of the developing countries and the least developed countries does not have the material or resources in order to adopt mitigation. So without acknowledging this fact, they have given more focus on mitigation compared to adaptation. So in reality, what is required, the true need is to focus more on adaptation than mitigation. So this is what is needed. Now let us come to Green Climate Fund. Let us see the working of Green Climate Fund. How does it work? Now we have seen that 
in the history the old age assumption is that mitigation requires more emphasis or more focus than adaptation therefore almost all the historic projects they have given more focus to mitigation than adaptation but there is an exemption for green climate fund the green climate fund have remained as a rare exception this is because it has given focus to both mitigation as well as adaptation so it has given equal preference to both mitigation as well as adaptation and therefore it is a rare exception from the other historical projects so it has provided funds for both mitigation plus adaptation and it has also adopted the unfccc principles and the provisions so it is guided by the provisions of unfccc now when we look at the share of funds allocated by the green climate fund for adaptation projects and mitigation projects adaptation gets 24 percentage and uh, mitigation gets 42 percentage so it together makes 66 percentage so 66 percentage of the funds under the green climate fund is uh, dedicated for adaptation and mitigation adaptation is getting 24 percentage mitigation 42 percentage now the balance 34 percentage now the balance 34 percentage is classified as cross cutting now cross cutting has a larger mitigation component now when we look at the green climate fund also even though it funds uh, both adaptation and mitigation projects more focus here also it is given for mitigation what is the reason why why low levels of funding is given to adaptation projects the first thing is that adaptation is a new endeavor without much expertise so much expertise is not available for adaptation this is a very new endeavor now second one is that adaptation primarily provides only local benefits so the benefits of adaptation adaptation is limited to local area but green climate fund which focuses on larger areas or globally does not give much importance to adaptation which provides benefits mostly which is of local in nature so these are the reasons now let us see what are the implications of this so the first implication is that the green climate fund has uh, failed to channel funding to the most vulnerable communities in the most vulnerable countries so certain vulnerable countries which are these vulnerable countries vulnerable countries are those countries on which the effects or the impact of the climate change is felt maximum so there are certain vulnerable countries and in those countries itself there are vulnerable categories they can be socially or economically backward communities living in the vulnerable countries so the biggest implication is on these people that the fund or the monetary resources under the green climate fund has not reached or it has been a failure to channel this uh, funding towards the vulnerable communities in vulnerable countries now who are these vulnerable communities in vulnerable countries these include those least developed countries small island developing states etc and what is the reason why this is happening this is because the green climate fund's mandate to act as a bank the green climate fund is supposed to act as a bank so what is the speciality of a bank the bank will seek returns on its investments so the green climate fund actually act as a bank who will seek return for their investments that is why they have not channeled their funds to least developed countries which are mostly vulnerable now third thing is that the green climate fund focuses on fund management capacities that is the capacity to manage the funds it focuses on the capacity to manage fund of both the recipient country the or the recipient government plus the implementing government now for example india is implementing a project in a, say a country in africa so here the receiving country is africa whereas india is the implementing country so now the green climate fund will focus on the fund management capacity or the capability of indian government as well as the country recipient countries government so this is another reason 
So this mandate of the Green Climate Fund to look into the management capacities of the recipient as well as the implementing country has made the access to large scale funding less possible or difficult. Now next thing is that in the absence of revenue streams, the adaptation projects, they have mostly remained micro and small and therefore incremental rather than transformative. The GCF, the Green Climate Fund, also insists only on genuine adaptation projects. So development proposals that are dressed up as uh, adaptation projects is not acceptable for Green Climate Fund. And due to this approach, adaptation projects from Bangladesh, Ethiopia, etc. were rejected lately. They really want genuine projects. They want adaptation projects. And that is why most of the developmental proposals that is dressed up as an adaptation program or a project has been rejected by the Green Climate Fund. Now let us see what is the possible solution to this. So we can find a possible solution to this issue in the GADF. What is GADF? It is Generic Adaptation Decision Framework. So GADF is Generic Adaptation Decision Framework. What it is? So this proposal for GADF was made in an article in the Journal of Indian Ocean Region. And what does the proposal say? So this is proposed to help rationalize between choices of in situ adaptation and managed retreat. So what is meant by in situ adaptation? In situ adaptation means adaptation in the vulnerable area within the area itself. So adaptation in the vulnerable area. Now what is meant by managed retreat? Managed retreat means movement to safer regions. So these are the two choices. So first choice is adaptation within in situ or within the vulnerable region. Let us take an example to understand it better. Suppose a place is highly vulnerable to certain disasters or certain climate change impacts. Then the adaptation can be either adopted within the area itself. Now what is the second solution? To move to safer regions. So we have to make a choice between both of this. Now GADF or Generic Adaptation Decision Framework proposes to help rationalize that is to make a rational choice between both these choices that is in situ adaptation and managed retreat. Now the GADF suggests that managed retreat should be thought of if three conditions are satisfied. So uh, rationalization of choices between both of this. So in what case can managed retreat be adopted? First case is that first condition, three conditions have to be satisfied. First condition is that the socio-economic well-being under the business as usual is diminishing. That is, if the socio and economic well-being is diminishing, there is social impact as well as economic impact. Now, second fact or second condition is that the cost of in situ adaptation is higher than the business as usual scenario so if the cost of adopting in situ adaptation is higher than the business as usual scenario now third one is that the net current value of ex situ adaptation is the highest of all the adaptation scenarios if the value of ex situ that is outside the vulnerable area so if the value of ex situ adaptation is highest of all the adaptation scenarios so these are the three conditions to be met and among these two choices managed retreat is considered as the better option or best option so under managed retreat what happens there is a movement to safer regions so the managed retreat can be designed in such a way that the host location that is the area which is going to adopt this people or this community the host location can be designed in such a way that this location can generate a revenue for the private investors as well as for the GCF or the Green Climate Fund and also the source location that is the area where there is a vulnerability the source location could generate again revenue in the way of uh, forest regeneration or tourism etc. So these are the possible solutions. Now let us take the example of Sundarbans Delta. 
the sundarbans delta has been encountering a relative mean rise in the sea level so a sea level rise of the bay of bengal at the rate of 8 mm per year over the last one decade that is last 10 years and also this area is subject to regular instances of land loss and disappearance of islands and also the proportion of high intensity events like the cyclones appears to be increasing in this region and this is possibly as a result of rising sea surface temperatures so given all these conditions sundarbans region becomes vulnerable so we can put sundarbans area under the gadf application so given the conditions in sundarbans gadf has, has an application in the sundarbans delta now a long term strategy for uh, adaptation and mitigation was already proposed uh, by the wwf that is worldwide fund for nature india by 2050 and uh, the long term strategy comes in the form of a managed retreat of the population by 2050 that is replacement or the movement of population from sundarban delta by the year 2050 and how the revenue can be generated we have earlier seen that under the gadf there is possibility of revenue generation in the source area so in sundarbans how the revenue can be generated this can be generated by the regeneration of the mangrove forest in the vacated vulnerable zone so it is believed that the managed retreat by 2050 will yield an economic benefit of 12.8 times than that of the usual business in this area that is sundarbans delta so this is the sundarbans example and given this gadf becomes very important and significant for india as well so this is very important topic for your upcoming examinations you can find the pdf of this lecture on our website www.studyiq.com you can follow my facebook page for more video updates you can write to me at joycy.studyiq@gmail.com for any of your queries and clarification thank you